Let's look at another example of a quadratic equation. This guy looks kind of nasty, and it's nasty because of the fractions, but we've already talked about how we can get rid of those fractions. Uh, we did that, we already did that yesterday. And what we need to find is, that's right, we need the least common denominator. So the LCD for everything here is six. And what I do is that I multiply everything in here times six. You can make that six over one if that helps you out. Now you can say six over one here, but this is just six times two. They're both integers, so it doesn't really matter to say that over one. And then we reduce this. Six divided by two is three, so three times the one. You get three x squared. Three reduces into the six two times, so that's plus four x. Then plus 12 is equal to, don't forget, six times zero is still just zero. Now, if only we had a formula to help us out with this. Hmm, what could that be? x e plus negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. See? Get it stuck in your head. It's a good thing. So now I've got a is equal to 3, b equals 4, and c equals 12. Again, I'm just picking those off from this form right here, the 3, 4, and the 12. You want to make sure that it is in descending order. You really want this guy to be positive. And as we saw before, let's go ahead and clear out those fractions if there are any that exist. You really do not want to be plugging in 1 half or 2 thirds into the quadratic formula. Trust me. If I don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. So let's see, x equals negative b. Well, b is 4, so it's going to be negative times 4 is negative 4. Plus or minus the square root. b squared is 4 squared, so that's 16. Now the minus 4ac, I'm going to do off to the side here, my little thought bubble. Minus 4ac is negative 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 12. So it's negative, because I only have one negative factor. 4 times 3 is 12, times 12 is 144. So minus 144. And this is all over 2a. Well, 2a, so that's 2 times 3, which is 6. Now I want to stop, I want you to stop right now. Do not try to reduce these guys right here. Although 4 and 6 do reduce, you cannot simplify and reduce it yet. 6 is the denominator for the negative 4, but it's also the denominator for whatever happens with this radical. And that's what we're going to figure out now. How does that radical simplify? So we get negative 4 plus or minus negative 144 and positive 16 is a negative 128. And this is all divided by 6. Well, now we got to see how this guy breaks down. Well, you may not think about you know, what's the best way of breaking this down, but you know that uh, 2 goes in here. 2 goes in there 64 times, and hey, I guess we got lucky today because 64 is a perfect square. So I get the negative 4 plus or minus. Now, not only does the 64 come out of the radical as an 8, but you also have this negative, and that negative will give you the factor of i. And then it's the 2 that stays inside the radical. And again, that's all over 6. We're almost done here. The last thing to do is to simplify this. Notice that every term in the numerator and in the denominator has a common factor of 2. So I can reduce all of these by 2. That's negative 2 plus or minus 4i square roots of 2 all over 3. Remember, you have to treat this as one whole term, one whole collection, because it's all connected through multiplication. So the 6 reduces with the 8 because it's on the outside, the 2 is on the inside. These guys don't play, but the ones that are outside the radical can, they reduce to 4 over 3. And this is our answer. Now this is totally acceptable to me on a test for you to write this. If you're doing things in my math lab, it may have you separate this and rewrite it to say the real part, which is negative 2 thirds, and then plus or minus 4 square roots of 2 over 3i, like that. It's kind of weird, it's kind of wonky, but that's sometimes how they want you to do that.